Are you still fasting, old man? When on earth do you plan to stop? Forgive me, everybody. Of course we forgive you. I always wanted you to admire my fasting. We do admire it. But you shouldn't admire it. Well, then we don't admire it. But why shouldn't we admire it? Because I can't help it. I have to fast. And why can't you help it? Because I couldn't find the food I like. If I had found it, believe me, I would have made no fuss and stuffed myself like you or anyone else. During these last decades, the interest in professional fasting has greatly diminished. It used to pay well to stage such great performances, but today that is quite impossible. We live in a different world now. At one time, the whole city took a lively interest in the hunger artist. From day to day, the excitement of his fast mounted. Everybody wanted to see him at least once a day. There were people who bought season passes for the last few days. Even in the night time, there were visiting hours when the whole effect was heightened by the torch flares. Suspicion was a necessary accompaniment to the profession of fasting. No one could possibly watch the hunger artist continuously, day and night. The hunger artist was therefore bound to be the sole, completely satisfied spectator of his own fast. Yet for other reasons he was never satisfied. For he alone knew how easy it was to fast. It was the easiest thing in the world. He made no secret of this, yet people did not believe him. At best, they set him down as modest. However, most thought he was out for publicity, or else was some kind of cheat who found it easy to fast because he had discovered a way of making it easy. To satisfy the public, relays of permanent watchers were selected, and it was their task to watch the hunger artist day and night, three of them at a time. This was, of course, merely a formality for the hunger artist would never in any circumstances, even if forced, swallow the smallest morsel of food. The watchers, who simply could not understand this, would huddle together and play cards, obviously intending to give the hunger artist a chance of a little refreshment, which they supposed he would draw from some private stash. Nothing annoyed the hunger artist more than such watchers. They made him miserable. They made his fast unendurable. Sometimes he mastered his feebleness sufficiently to sing during their watch for as long as he could keep going, to show them how unjust their suspicions were. But that was of little use. They only wondered at his cleverness in being able to fill his mouth even while singing. The longest period of fasting was set by his manager at 40 days. Beyond that term he was not allowed to go, not even in great cities, and there was good reason for it too. Experience had proved that for about 40 days the interest of the public could be stimulated by a steadily increasing pressure of advertisement. After that the town began to lose interest. Sympathetic support began to fall off. So on every 40th day, the cage was opened. Enthusiastic spectators began to fill the hall. A military band played, and a doctor announced the results of the fast through a megaphone. Finally, two ladies appeared to assist the hunger artist out of the cage. The hunger artist turned stubborn. He refused to stand on his own legs. Why stop now when he's in his best fasting form? Why should he be cheated of the fame he would get from fasting longer? For being not only the record hunger artist of all time, which presumably he was already, but for beating his own record by a performance beyond human imagination. A hush came over the audience as the cage door opened. The manager lifted his arms into the air. <laughs> then came the food 
little of which we managed to get between the artist's lips. The band confirmed the end of the fast with a mighty flourish. The spectators melted away, and no one had any cause to be dissatisfied with the proceedings, except the hunger artist himself, and he alone, as always. The pampered hunger artist suddenly found himself deserted one fine day by the amusement seekers, who were streaming past him to other more favoured attractions. For the last time, the manager hurried him over half the country to discover whether the old interest might still survive here and there. All in vain. Everywhere, as if by secret agreement, a positive revulsion from professional fasting was in evidence. What, then, was the hunger artist to do? He had been applauded by thousands in his time and could hardly come down to showing himself at village fairs. So he took leave of the manager and hired himself to a large circus. He and his cage were stationed, not in the middle of the ring as a main attraction, but outside, near the animal cages. He might fast as much as he could, but nothing could save him now. People passed him by. Many more days went by, then one day a cleaner's eye fell on the cage, and he wondered why this perfectly good cage should be left standing there, unused. Are you still fasting, old man? When on earth do you plan to stop? Forgive me, everybody. Of course we forgive you. I always wanted you to admire my fasting. We do admire it. But you shouldn't admire it. Well, then we don't admire it. But why shouldn't we admire it? Because I can't help it. I have to fast. And why can't you help it? Because I couldn't find the food I like. If I had found it, believe me, I would have made no fuss and stuffed myself like you or anyone else. Mm -hmm. 